There's a saying that what you focus on expands. So today I'm going to be sharing three things that I'm focusing on in my life right now to help me create my rich life. Hi, I'm Scarlett Cochran. I'm a lawyer and author and a wealth expert. And this is One Big Happy Life, where we help you build wealth while creating a life that you love today. This year, there are actually five key areas of my life that I am focusing on as I intentionally design a life that I love. I shared the first two in the last episode, so if you missed that, be sure to check it out by clicking the link up above or down in the description box because they're all interrelated. None of them stands on their own. So you really need to watch both videos to get a full picture of what I'm working on in my life right now. Today, I'm taking you behind the scenes of my own life to share what I'm focusing on over the course of the next year to really consciously design my life on purpose. But before I do, I have to invite you to a brand new live money masterclass that I'm going to be teaching called the four keys to building wealth in 2023 and beyond. You can head on over to onebighappylife.com forward slash masterclass to save your seat. And in this class, I'm going to be teaching you how to start building wealth and to make building wealth inevitable so that you can continue to build wealth in any economy while also being able to spend guilt-free on a life that you love. So here's what I want you to do. Pause this video right now, click the link either up above in the card or down below in the description box, head on over to onebighappylife.com forward slash masterclass and save your seat for the live class. I cannot wait to see you there. So number three for me is joyful business growth. I really wanna focus on continuing to grow my company, One Big Happy Life, in a way that's enjoyable, that where I can show up to work every day and be excited about the work that I'm doing. Now, why is this a focus for me this year? Well, I believe that we continually go through cycles and and phases in our lives, both in our personal lives and also in our work lives. And as part of those cycles, we enter this period of time where we start asking ourselves questions about the path that we're currently on and start making decisions for where we're heading in this next phase, right? We might just be clarifying that we're on the right track or we might decide that we want to completely transition away. And so for me, I think I've come to that point here with One Big Happy Life because of the book, because now I'm a published author. And as part of publishing the book, I did a lot of things that I hadn't really done as much in the business. So public speaking, live TV, going on other people's podcasts. I went on almost a hundred podcasts as I was launching the book. And so it felt like, and now that the book is out in the world, it felt like the perfect time to just take a step back and reevaluate and rethink what the next phase of One Big Happy Life could look like. And as I've been doing this, because it's still a work in progress, I know for me, what's really important for this next phase of life is being able to find joy in the work that I'm doing. I've always prioritized doing work that I found to be meaningful and challenging and exciting. And so this isn't actually something that is brand new to me and my approach to work and business, but what can happen is as you get into business, and I think this is true as you get into your career, some of that can kind of fall to the wayside and you start looking at more like what should I do versus what do you want to do? And what do I have to do versus what do I feel called to do? So right now I'm really reevaluating and redefining what work and business looks like to me in this next phase of my business. So what does that mean? Doing work that excites me and that I personally find interesting. And so I've been asking myself, what does that look like for One Big Happy Life? What kind of work do I want to do? What do I want my body of work to be to look like? How do I want to help people? And the answer has still always been talking about personal finance and managing your money and building wealth and also talking about how do you create and design an intentional life. And I find too now wanting to teach about growing your income and building a business you love. And so this year, that is one of the things that I'm going to focus on working with people and helping people grow businesses that allow them to make money on their own terms 
and grow their expertise and share their expertise with the world. So that's one of the answers that I've come to and that's helped me make decisions as far as what this year will look like in business and what we're gonna be focusing on. I also wanna make sure that I'm structuring my work in a way that feels really sustainable for me. And not just for me, but everyone who works in the company. And one of the things that I've been playing around with is the 30 hour work week, not just for me, but for everyone and what that could look like. And how can we work less as a company, but still grow? And I have this vision of the 40 hour work week going away for everyone one day. And one day the 30 hour work week will be the new norm. And the only way that happens is if companies actually start doing it. So figuring out how to do the things that we used to do, like as in create the results that we wanna create while working less and working in a way that's more sustainable. So embracing this idea of slow productivity and taking time with your work versus rushing off to the next thing. And so we're only setting projects based on our actual capacity, again, based on this 30 hour week, instead of just cramming things on and jumping to the next thing, which look, I have been guilty of in the past and it's something that I don't wanna happen anymore which also means setting better boundaries in business. That, and for me, that also means when I'm working, I'm working, when I'm not working, I'm not working, and I'm not thinking about the business. It also means cutting back on my social media use, how much I'm actually on Instagram, for example, and even deciding which platforms make the most sense for us going forward. Should we do TikTok? Should we stay on YouTube or should I have a podcast? Should we just focus on uh, sending emails? Those are questions that we ask and as we're, ask, as we're figuring out the answers to those things, I'm really thinking about the kind of boundaries that I want to create in my own life between me as a person, my family, what I share online and how available I am and how much time I devote to these online platforms versus time devoted to developing my work and sharing it publicly. Like those are actually two very different things and there's a big conflict, <laughs> at least in me, as I'm thinking about my schedule and thinking about how I wanna show up. So no answers there, just talking through how I'm thinking of things and what's coming up for me. And I think the answers will become readily apparent over the next couple of months as you just watch what I'm actually doing. It also means allowing myself to do less in business and being okay with that, which has meant that I haven't been producing as much free public facing content on our platforms as people have been used to over the past few years, because I've really been focused on, of course, delivering coaching and teachings inside of Wealth Builder Society, Business Simplified, my Ascend Mastermind. So our programs where we're working with people to truly transform their lives step-by-step, my focus has been there for sure, creating this book so that more of the work can get out into people's hands in a way that is easily digestible and actually in order that can teach the concepts in just a tight format that's very accessible to just about everyone. So my focus has been that, and also creating a lot of podcasts on other people's platforms. So after I shoot this video today, I have two podcast interviews that I'm gonna be doing. And so that's two hours where I'm creating outside of One Big Happy Life, but I'm still teaching those principles. But I know that it's a priority for me to make sure that I have the energy and the capacity to publish my own work on my own platforms, whichever platforms those happen to be that we end up choosing. And as of right now, I can guarantee one of them will be YouTube. Whether it will be anything beyond that right now is a question mark, and that's okay. Number four is fun and hobbies. So I want to make sure that I'm prioritizing time for fun and hobbies because I think that it's really important. It's stuff that I enjoy doing that's also really easy to push to the wayside because other things are, you know, quote unquote, more important or they feel more urgent or it feels like too much of a luxury to take this time to go do this thing for myself. And also it can be sometimes challenging to um, include optional things that you've never done before in your budget that you don't even know whether or not you're gonna like the thing. 
So that is why our money mindset is so important because we can unconsciously stop ourselves from experiencing the things that we wanna experience in life because we dismiss those things as not important, not valuable, not worth the time or money it takes to actually create those things in our lives. And I can be very guilty, like I can be very bad at not prioritizing fun and hobbies or getting really complacent and saying, oh, well, I like to watch a show at home so I can just do that for fun. And so then I have my fun. But in reality, I also value new experiences. And also I realized that although watching a show and streaming a show on the couch with my family is a fun activity, it's important that I ask myself, is there something else that we could be doing that we would enjoy more? Or am I just doing, and am I just doing this because it's a habit, because it's what I'm used to, because I feel like I don't have the energy to do anything else? And oftentimes the answer is, you know, it's just because it's a habit. Another question that I ask myself is, if this is how, is all I did for my leisure and my fun, at the end of my life, how will I feel about how I spent my time? And typically when it comes to just watching shows, especially binging shows, watching shows for hours at a time, I know that that's not how I will have wanted to spend my time. So that is why prioritizing hobbies and fun have has become one of my top five this year. That includes doing things that I already know that I love, but haven't been doing as much as I would like to do. So I love reading fiction, especially speculative fiction, so horror, sci-fi, fantasy, and I haven't been doing as much as, as as much of that as I would like. So I'm gonna uh, prioritize reading at least one book a month would be great. Um, so I'm going to prioritize starting to read again. And again, this will be a tiny habit where my goal is to read one sentence a day. That's it, just one sentence a day right before bed. Also doing DIY projects. I've always loved doing DIY projects. <laughs> really the very first thing, as soon as I bought my first house when I was 20 years old was to paint a mural on Alexis's nursery wall. So not having a DIY project going or planned feels very foreign to me. So I wanna make sure that I'm planning projects periodically throughout the year. Though I will say that DIY projects can often feel very heavy to me. So I wanna make sure that I'm not trying to get them done under some tight timeline, that it's okay for a project for me to work on it a little bit over the course of the year. I think that will feel really good to me. Then there are things that I've never tried before that I feel like I want to do. So I wanna learn how to play cello and I wanna learn how to speak Japanese because I want to travel to Japan in the next few years and I wanna actually be able to speak some amount of Japanese when I am there versus trying to speak English. So those are two things that I'd love to fit into my schedule that I haven't yet figured out how to do, but I'm gonna keep them top of mind to somehow figure out how to do it. And then last but not least is building my relationships and connections. Studies have shown that having meaningful relationships really do contribute to that overall feeling of having had, having lived a fulfilling and happy life. And that is something that doesn't always come naturally to me because I grew up in a household where I was largely by myself a lot. So I've been kind of a loner for most of my life. And not to say that that has stopped me from building relationships, it hasn't, but I want to get better at nurturing relationships because it's very easy for me to not have spoken to someone for a year and feel like it's not a big deal and we can just pick up where we left off because that's kind of all I require <laughs> As from the people who are not living in the house with me, but I realize that that is not the case for other people. And I want to prioritize nurturing the relationships that really matter to me. So not only my relationship with my children and with Joseph, but also with people who don't live with me. So my friends who I've been friends with for decades, but we only speak a couple of times a year, I wanna make sure that I'm checking in on them, that I initiate just as much as they do. But also the relationships that I have that are more challenging. I want to see what I can do to strengthen those relationships over the course of the next year. And lastly, because we live in a new city where we know absolutely no one, I want to figure out how to find friends 
who live near us that we can hang out with and have potlucks with and go hiking with and camping and do all sorts of fun things with. And I don't know how to do it, but I'm going to figure it out. And one of the things I've done recently is that we joined a club and honestly, not just for me, but also for all of us, because none of us know anyone here. And so Alexis needs friends her own age. Reeves needs friends his own age. Joseph needs friends his own age who are not me. And so one of the things I did so far is I joined a, a club that has swim and tennis and leagues and things. So Reeves just joined the swim team. So he'll be doing that over the summer. So hopefully he'll meet some people there. And then Joseph has already joined the men's league. And so he actually goes out and plays tennis now every week, which is really fun because throughout our entire relationship, he's never had male friends. He's never gone out and done anything. So I'm very excited excited for him. And even Alexis has made a friend. So I'm hoping to find some new friends and build some new relationships who are local, in addition to the wonderful friends that I have who are outside of the local area. But for my friends who don't live near me, I'd also like to make more of an effort to try to travel to see them. I think it can be really easy to say that, well, I don't have time to travel or just to not make things a priority again, often because of money, because we're looking at, well, what else could I do with a thousand dollars or $2,000 besides just go hang out with a friend, not realizing the value of those memories on our lives over the course of our lives. When we make the effort to show up and continue to nurture those relationships and go above and beyond and do just beyond just the bare minimum that it can pay off in so many ways beyond just money. So those are the five things that I'm working on. And even though I did try to practice some amount of constraint with them, they are a lot. And so I want you to think of these not as goals specifically that are tangible where I have to accomplish them this year, but really a, intentions, areas of focus that I want to drive how I'm showing up in my life over the course of the next year. And my areas of focus may look very different from yours. So for example, I didn't mention specifically working on our finances as a focus because it's actually not. I mean, we have financial goals for sure, but I don't need to work specifically on my financial habits, my financial skills in order to make those happen. So it's not gonna be a focus for me this year, but it may be for you. If it is, and you have not headed over to save your seat for the Money Masterclass, do that now. Head on over to onebighappylife.com forward slash masterclass and save your seat and join me live for the four keys to building wealth in 2023 and beyond. Also, take a moment to comment down below and share what's one area of your life that you are focusing on this year and why. All right, I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.